Hi, hello everyone. I'm Toshi from Japan and tourist guide for foreigners. In this video, I'll show you 16 tourist traps you must know before traveling to Japan in 2024. Japan is widely known as one of the safest countries for travelers worldwide. With low theft rates and minimal crime, it's generally a secure destination. However, there are exceptions to such reputations, unfortunately, in Japan. There are fraudsters who cheat foreigners into stealing cash. Also, there are many things that are legal, but should be noted. For example, in Japan, high-priced products targeting foreigners have recently appeared. This is a price that ordinary Japanese cannot buy. In this video, I'll discuss 16 points divided into three categories to help tourists stay vigilant. The first is illegal fraud that occurs frequently in Japan. The second is legal but noteworthy matters, and the third is potential concerns to watch out for in the future. By watching this video, you can avoid falling into a tragic fate, then you will be able to enjoy your trip to Japan safely and comfortably. So, be sure to watch till the end. So, let's get started! Illegal fraud that occurs frequently in Japan Number 1 is Begging Monks Picture this, someone dressed as a Buddhist monk may approach you, and they might request money. They often ask for donations for what they claim are religious or temple-related purposes, to make their stories seem credible. They might even show you a book with a list of names and donation amounts from other supposed contributors. The problem is, those names and amounts are likely fake. In reality, any money you give will end up right in their pockets. These individuals are not genuine monks, they are running a scam. It's a unique form of fraud in Japan that preys on foreign travelers, especially those less familiar with Japanese temple culture. I have witnessed this fraud in Ueno, Tokyo, and Kamakura, Kanagawa Prefecture. To protect yourself, it's advisable to avoid making any kind of donation to these individuals. If you genuinely want to support a temple or religious cause, it's better to visit established temples and make donations there. Stay alert and don't fall for these deceptive tactics. Number 2 is Scouting for Model This is a scam that frequently targets young, attractive, and stylish female travelers in Tokyo's trendy neighborhoods such as Shibuya and Harajuku. Here's how it works. A person with a camera may approach you, compliment your appearance, and ask to take one or two pictures of you afterward. They might introduce themselves as modeling scouts and try to gather more information about you. Now, Japan is undoubtedly a fashion hub, but it's essential to be cautious. It's highly unlikely that a stranger on the street would approach you and ask to take pictures. Victims of this scam have sometimes experienced harassment, assault, or even coercion into the adult entertainment industry. Your safety is of utmost importance. If someone approaches you with such a request, decline politely and walk away. Avoid sharing your personal information with strangers and always trust your instincts. Number 3 is Spiked Drink. When you're in the area like Roppongi and Shinjuku, Tokyo, a vibrant entertainment district, the last thing you'd expect is to fall victim to a spiked drink scam. Here's how it works. You enter a bar, innocently place an order, and engage in conversation. Either with the bartender or someone you've met there. Unknown to you, your drink gets spiked. After just a few sips, you black out. The purpose behind this scam is often to steal your passport or empty your wallet. When you wake up, you're confronted with an exorbitant bill you supposedly owe the bar. The staff may even resort to force to make you withdraw cash from an ATM. Putting your safety at risk, sexual assaults have also been reported in connection with spiked drinks. Making this a great concern, to protect yourself, be extra cautious when entering bars in the area like Rapanji and Shinjuku. Don't drink alone, especially in less reputable areas. Always keep an eye on your drink, and never leave it unattended. By staying in a group and watching out for each other, you can significantly reduce the risk of falling victim to this scam. Your safety is the most important. So please stay alert while enjoying the nightlife in Japan. Number 4 is Bats rip you off. This scam often happens particularly in areas like Kabukicho in Shinjuku and Roppongi, UC. These areas are known for their vibrant nightlife. 
but they're also hot spots for a certain kind of scam. It usually starts with street touts who promise unbelievably cheap drinks or all you can drink. Deals to lure you into their bars. When it's time to pay, you might be hit with an exorbitant bill. And things can take a dark turn from there. Some unfortunate visitors have faced intimidation, threats, or even violence when refusing to pay. Many people, both Japanese and foreigners, have experienced these scams. So, I often found police officers along the street and announcements warning against these scams. But to stay safe, here's what you need to do. Never follow these street touts into bars. And do some research on bars and clubs beforehand. Check out their reviews and reputation. So please keep these tips in mind and enjoy your time in Japan safe travels. Number 5 is Friendly Bar Friends. Picture this, you're strolling through these bustling nightlife districts, and a friendly Japanese woman, who you might have met via a mobile app or just on the street, invites you for a drink. Sounds harmless, right? Well, not quite. You may find yourself in a bar, having a great time, when suddenly, your new friend disappears. Usually with excuses like needing to use the restroom or make a call. And then, here comes the catch. The bar staff swoops in and hands you an outrageous bill sometimes for just a few drinks. It's a classic Beitan switch. To avoid falling for this scam, be cautious about accepting random invitations, especially if they seem too good to be true. And, as I mentioned in the previous chapter, when visiting nightlife spots in big city like Tokyo and Osaka, it's always a good idea to stick to reputable bars and clubs, perhaps ones you've researched or read reviews about online. So keep your wits about you, stay safe, and enjoy your nights in Japan. Number 6 is Money Scam. Regrettably, as a foreigner, you might encounter situations where you're overcharged or receive incorrect change. Let me share a recent personal story to illustrate this point. My friend from Korea had a troubling experience. While enjoying the sights at a popular tourist spot, he ordered food from a stall. The staff at the food stall at the tourist spot purposely charged him a 10 0 yen bill instead of a 1,000 yen bill. Unfortunately, such incidents targeting tourists do occur, particularly in well-visited destinations like Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. One of the key factors contributing to these scams is the culture of cash is king in Japan. To protect yourself, it's essential to familiarize yourself with Japanese currency. Learn to recognize different bills and coins before you come to Japan. And, please, always make it a habit to double-check your change when you got it. By doing this, you can significantly reduce the chance of falling victims to these scams. Number 7 is Disaster Scam. You might be approached by middle-aged women who speak decent English, carrying pamphlets claiming to be for a noble cause, they mainly target foreigners, rarely approaching Japanese locals. Their pamphlets often highlight recent natural disasters in Japan. Like floods or earthquakes, they'll politely request you to make a donation to help the victims. Now, these women may appear well-dressed and extremely courteous, but it's a scam. So you should absolutely refrain from making any donations. If you genuinely wish to contribute to disaster relief efforts in Japan, it's always best to do so through established and reputable organizations or charities. Please stay alert and avoid falling for these deceptive tactics. Enjoy your time in Japan with your confidence. Number 8 is Orphanage Scam. This scam often involves well-dressed individuals, primarily found in Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam who approach you under the pretense of collecting money to help orphans. Now, helping those in need is always a noble cause. But it's essential to ensure the credibility of such requests. Recently, this type of scam has been occurring primarily in Tokyo's Harajuku area. Polite individuals may approach you, presenting various pamphlets asking for donations to support orphanages. It's essential not to be misled, to protect yourself from such scams. It's advisable to research and verify the legitimacy of the organizations or individuals requesting donations. Authentic charitable organizations in Japan are registered and can provide transparency about their activity. Remember, it's important to help those in need, but doing so through established and reputable channels. 
legal but not what really matters. Number 9 is foreigners' price. In this chapter, let's talk about the introduction of foreigner targeted pricing in Japan. For instance, take the famous seafood bowls at Toyosu Fish Market in Tokyo. Seafood bowls that are hard to eat for ordinary Japanese, such as 7,000 yen, 14,000 yen, and 18,000 yen, have begun to be sold. However, it is very popular with foreigners and is very successful. Similarly, in the Seko, Hokkaido, a favorite destination for powder snow enthusiasts, you might find ramen noodle exceeding 3,000 yen. However, there have been many countries overseas that have introduced different amounts of money from locals and foreigners. For example, diamond heads in Hawaii are free for people living in Hawaii and don't need to make a reservation. But tourists need to make a reservation for $5. There is a price difference between $90 for Americans and $120 for foreign tourists at Hawaiian golf courses. Likewise, in Bangkok, Thailand, entry to Wat Pho, the oldest temple, is free for Thais but costs 300 baht for foreign tourists. So this is happening all over the world. But I think this is the first time in Japan. There is a possibility that it will occur in many places in the future. So I let you know as soon as there is any update. So please subscribe to my channel. Number 10 is bathing tax. Bathing taxes are additional charges that visitors might encounter when using hot spring bathing facilities in certain areas of Japan. It's essential to note that this tax is separate from the bathing fees themselves. The bathing tax amount can differ based on the region you visit. For example, in places like the popular Kinosaki Onsen, which is welcoming to visitors with tattoos, the bathing tax stands at 150 yen in the renowned Beppu Onsen in Oida Prefecture. Known for its abundant hot springs, the tax ranges from 50 to 500 yen per hotel stay. Depending on the accommodation fee, these details are subject to change, and the tax rates may be periodically updated. To make your trip to Japan enjoyable and comfortable and avoid any troubles, please be sure to check the latest information before your visit. Number 11 is Accommodation Tax. Hotel tax is a fee imposed on individuals staying at hotels or Ryakin's Japanese inns. The application and amount of this tax vary by region across Japan. Cities popular among foreign visitors like Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto require payment of this tax, for instance. In Tokyo, if your accommodation costs less than 10,000 yen per night, no tax is applied. For accommodations priced between 10,000 and 15,000 yen, a tax of 100 yen is levied. And for prices exceeding 15,000 yen, it's 200 yen. The implementation of hotel tax is becoming more widespread throughout Japan, for instance. In historical destinations such as Nagasaki Prefecture, known for its significance during World War II, the lodging tax was introduced in April 2023. Please note that these details may have changed or may vary depending on the region. To ensure you have the most accurate and recent information, I recommend checking my videos or referring to reliable sources before planning your trip to Japan. Number 12 is Island tax. Recently, there's been an introduction of what might seem like additional taxes at popular tourist spots. These island tax are essentially price increases for entry into certain destinations. For instance, take Miyajima, one of Japan's iconic locations, part of the three views of Japan and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Since October 2023, visitors need to pay a 100 yen entry tax to access this scenic spot. Similarly, in Okinawa's beloved Takatomi Island, since April 2023, there's been a 300 yen entry tax, with considerations to raise it to 2,000 yen in 2024. The government is exploring various avenues to collect more from tourists now. These charges might add up, impacting your travel budget. If you are aiming for a budget-friendly trip to Japan, I'd suggest considering an early visit before these changes become mandatory. Number 13 is Consumption Tax. The standard consumption tax rate in Japan is 10%. However, there's a reduced tax rate of 8% for certain items like food purchased at supermarkets. 
when dining at restaurants or enjoying services. The standard 10% tax rate is usually applied, and for items considered as indulgences, such as alcoholic beverages, the tax rate remains at 10%. In Japan, most displayed prices already include the consumption tax. It's crucial to note that in some instances, especially in smaller shops or for specific products, prices might be shown before tax. This could lead to slight differences between the displayed price and the actual payment amount. Moreover, certain duty-free shops or tourist-friendly areas might offer tax-free shopping options. You need to show the entry stamp on your passport at the time of entry to Japan to receive the discount. So when traveling in Japan, always carry your passport with you. Number 40 is Departure Tax. Departure Tax, introduced in 2019, aims to collect funds for tourism infrastructure and promote environmental sustainability in Japan. The tax applies to individuals departing Japan via air or sea travel, requiring a payment of 1,000 yen per person. This is included in the price of air tickets and ships departing from Japan, and does not need to be paid at the time of actual departure. In other words, we are taxed in places that we are not aware of, so it is a tax that we tend to overlook. Therefore, those who are visiting Japan from areas far away from Japan, such as Europe and America, and are thinking of using Japan as a base to travel around Asia should be careful. If you leave Japan multiple times, you will need to pay this tax each time. Number 15 is Alcohol Tax. This is a tax imposed on beverages classified as alcohol, included in the price when purchasing alcohol at retail stores or ordering at restaurants. In other words, it's something you pay without specific awareness. However, the latest news is that starting October 2023, with the revision of alcohol taxes, the tax on a single can of beer has been reduced from 70 yen to 63 yen. This reduction, amid overall price increases in Japan, is indeed great news for travelers. However, it's important to note that this specifically applies to purchases at supermarkets or similar retail stores. While this decrease in alcohol price might not directly impact all bars, it's a positive change for those planning to buy alcohol at retail stores during their stay in Japan. Potential concern to watch out for in the future. Number 16 is tourist tax in Osaka. In March 2024, the Japanese government announced its consideration of introducing a tourist tax for visitors to Osaka as part of efforts to address over-tourism issues and beautify the city. This is a measure taken to tackle challenges arising from excessive tourism and to contribute to city improvements. This move mirrors similar initiatives worldwide, with Japan joining the ranks of countries exploring the implementation of such measures, for instance, Indonesia began collecting a tourist tax of 150,000 Indonesian rupiahs, approximately $10 from foreign tourists visiting Bali starting February 2024. The proposed implementation date for Osaka is April 2025, aligning with the scheduled opening of the Osaka Expo in April 2025. However, it's important to note that this plan is still under consideration and subject to change. I'll keep you informed of future developments. How about 16 tourist traps you must know before traveling to Japan in 2024? Please share your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like button. See you in my next video. Bye!